Hey everybody, it's Robert and you're watching Sidestep Adventures and I'm out here with Mr. Dan and today we are at the Watley House which is the second oldest house in Harris County, Georgia and the oldest house built by European settlers still standing out here in Harris County, Georgia. Now this is a beautiful old house and it's really fascinating to we're able to really see the construction of it. Uh, this first portion of the house is obviously a log cabin that was built we think around 1828 and then there's another portion of the house that was built in the 1830s with a slightly different material design that we'll take a look at. Basically what I've been told over the years is that this was built by Seben Jones Watley. This is his old uh, residence. He settled here. Uh, it's pretty well documented in 1828 and he married uh, a lady that lived right up the road here. Her family had settled here about the same time and that was the Livingston family. And he married one of the Livingstons and they, uh, he, I think he added on these rooms after he got married. He married in 1832. Uh, the original part of the house is uh, pretty obvious. It's underpinned with rock, even up under where the additions were put on. The original part was one big room and it had an upstairs. Uh, then they added on to the other side of it, one large room over there, and then added some rooms, shed rooms onto the back. So it, it looks to me like it originally had three main chimneys on it. And so the logs on the outside of the house were covered up for years with a uh, clapboard siding that has been removed so we can actually see the logs that make up this section of log cabin. And another interesting thing to note is that there's no signs of any kind of mortaring or chinking that was ever done between these logs. Uh, so we believe that very quickly after this house was built, it was sided and possibly temporarily sided with just wood on the inside at the time. early square nails. Uh, Mr. Watley lived his entire life after coming to Harris County in this house. He died here in the 1880s. Uh, he's buried just up the road. We've been to his cemetery before, but uh, he was very, very uh, involved in Harris County politics and civic uh, aspects of the county. And he gave the land for the Ebenezer Baptist Church, which is just right over there a little ways. And his family lived in Harris County uh, for several generations. And this house was in the family, I understand, until after the turn of the century, around 19, early 1900s. And uh, then it was sold to the Short family. The Short family, who lived over that direction, there's a big place over there called the Horton Place and the Short family had bought that. They wound up with this place and then it was in that family until the King family bought it, I understand, in the 1940s. But from then on, it's been rental property. It's been, it was rental property when I was little. There was a, a family lived here and uh, I think it was rental property on up until Mr. Miss Straw bought it and uh, they, re they renovated it and restored it back to really good condition and then they put it on the market and I believe Mrs. Straub is coming to tell you a little bit about that uh, a little later on today. Uh, my name is Linda Straub. Um, my husband and I bought the house in poor condition I guess in the early 2000s and um, renovated it um, just for sale but also because we wanted to save the house. The chimney was falling off um, the far end of the house, um, the interior had a lot of, a lot of issues. I don't really remember that there were all that many exterior issues at that point. This but chimney on the end over there that it was falling apart. It, it was, was strapped to the house. It was with a metal strap and, um, there was no way to fix it. So my husband took it down and rebuilt it from, from scratch. That's incredible. This room is pretty much unchanged. Um, 
from when we finished with the house. We left the, the wood siding and ceilings um, and the beautiful big fireplace. This, however, this was one big room which that door entered into directly. And of course there were no doors out. That was the back wall of the house. Right, and this is the fireplace that y'all rebuilt? Yes. So that addition that's down there is newer than 2003 when y'all sold the house. That's yes. a, a modern addition. Of course, this is all just yes. drywall, but originally this, this was just two big rooms and that's it how y'all left it. Yeah. It was two big rooms in the front of the house. Gotcha. That was it. unchanged also the sink was one we found in the house oh really so we reused it we, we really liked that sink it's very cool and our thought was that the addition to the house rather than go out the side should go out this way gotcha um, and that's that was our great advice to the people who bought it from right. us. And they obviously had, had other visions. That's right. And I don't honestly remember what was what was here, but I know that this was our, our way out. Gotcha. Supposed way out. And there was an article that was written um, about y'all's restoration of this house. And one thing in the article um, said y'all replaced some of these floors like these with the, the original or original style big wide boards. Yes, where we had to. Yeah. We did that. Um, but mostly, I mean, this wall, you can see that we've added heart pine uh, boards between the the logs yeah so that it all looked we, so we could expose the the log wall so was it covered up when y'all started here yes gotcha it was but we were so thrilled with the with the log with the logs oh they're gorgeous and the ceiling did, did the same thing it it still sags yeah and and there was that was an old opening for a stove, and we left that. You know, just evidence of the way the house had been as originally. And the people who, who bought it from us decided that this was going to fall down. And so they had a big, um, I guess, two by four. It was propping up the ceiling. Oh, really? Yes. And here it is all these years later, <laughs> yeah. still standing. Yes, it is. And the deck we did put on. The deck was an addition that we did. So upstairs? Yeah. I love this door. Yeah, me too. It's gorgeous. <laughs> and these stairs are something else. Well, what do you know about this door that goes nowhere? It was here. Yeah. We left it. Right? That's awesome. <laughs> Our dog went up here one day, and because it's so steep, she couldn't get down. And she just sat up here and cried until we carried her down. Oh, really? Yep. And more of Jim's love of logs. <laughs> yeah, they are gorgeous. And I would guess we did this. Put in the bathroom. It certainly looks like one of Jim's bathrooms. I honestly don't have much memory of it, but in the closet. Yes, I'm sure that this was all one big area. Right. And he just blocked it off to give it a bathroom in a closet. Yeah. And you would, we talked about uh, scorched logs in here. Where were they at? Okay. 
They were, um, I think, if I go downstairs, I can probably show you. Okay. I have to look at the ceiling. It's all on this side of the house, but I think maybe it was like above here, I think. It may have been the kitchen, but it was right along that. Gotcha. That side. And that was from a fairly modern fire that had happened here? Yes. Gotcha. And Dan was kind enough to send me a picture of the house with the roof at its original angle. Right now it's much flatter gotcha. than it was originally. Okay. And I tried to put the house on the National Register and they did not like the, the roof gotcha. change. Wow. And so they, I never, I never finished the negotiations with them, but I did, I, I think I must have put an ad in the paper or something looking for a picture. And Dan sent me one, and I passed it on to the people who bought the house because I thought that they loved it at right. the beginning. So yeah, yeah, it's been through a few owners since uh, since you sold it. It has. Uh, the second people we sold it to, uh, the woman was the Episcopal priest who founded St. Francis St. Nicholas Church in Hamilton, oh, the wow. Episcopal Church. Uh, she and her husband were the next owners. And I think that she passed away and I and then I lost track of what happened to it. Gotcha. But I think that they're the ones that did the addition. Gotcha, that makes sense. And so y'all have, you and your husband have restored quite a few uh, historic homes I hear. We, we started out in the historic district in Columbus. We redid a two-story Victorian there that we lived in. Wow. Um, and then we bought a farmhouse, um, an 1890s farmhouse off of Hopewell Church Road, which we lived in and we did. Um, and then I think this one was next. We redid one in St. Mary's, Georgia for our vacation home. And then we, the big one that we did was the one that's on Oak Mountain Road. Gotcha, that's awesome. The Carlisle House. Yeah. And Dan, you said that you remembered when this house actually burned. Um, I do. I don't remember if lightning struck it or if one of the children who lived here with the rental uh, family that was renting the place. Uh, at any rate, the, the upstairs caught on fire and the roof was damaged heavily. And that window right up there is back in the original location where there was a window. But I remember that from that window up, it was damaged. Uh, no, it wasn't to the point that the roof was burned off. It was just damaged a little bit. Certainly nothing wrong with it. The logs up there were charred, but you see how thick these logs are? The charring was only just a little bit of, of black smut. Really, there was no damage, no, no structural damage. But Mr. Straub, uh, he, he completely uh, rebuilt all that. It has stood the test of time, that's for sure. Absolutely. And it's endangered now. And hopefully it won't be. Hopefully someone will save it. Something that kind of caught my eye here was this row of pigs. Each log has a hole with a pig up above the roof line of this old porch. The pegs were never sawn off, but they were here. When they covered this with clapboard, they sawed those off. But what would that have been for? Oh, it's for this wall. There's a, so originally the cabin ended right here, and this would have been the end of the cabin at this point here. You can really see two different structures here. Okay. But when they built this addition, which is very early addition, they moved the wall from here to there to right here. Okay. And if you look inside the house, you can see the wall is right there at these pegs. Hmm. That indicates that this addition is really, really not much older than this log house, the log section, because if they had to peg that right there instead of nailing it or, or bolting it in some way, then, I mean, look how that's done. Can you get a shot of that? Yeah. 
That's really cool. It is. And that's what uh, we were discussing just before we came up here off camera is the two different structures here. Um, because you can really see with these logs exposed um, how this house is made up of two different structures. The original cabin did end right here where you see the logs end. And it makes up this first big square. And then we come over here and as Dan said this other early addition that is made with dimensional lumber but huge beams rather than what we would think of as later 1800s house um, with rough sawn like two by fours. Um, this is made up of huge beams that are also mortise and tenon. Tenon? Is that the right mortise word? Tenon, yes. um, you can see they're that pegged. those are pegged and you can see how they're cut in to fit in that upper beam there. So very very early construction here as well. And the porch was added across here all at the same time. If you notice the uh, floor joists from the upstairs of, of uh, well, from the attic, to be the ceiling joists, they stick out and see where they cut them at an angle on the ends for these porch rafters to butt against. That's very unique. And I see also up under the tin, uh, we still have the original wood shingles. Wood shingles, yeah. Do you know about when uh, wood shingles went out of fashion around here? Would that have been the original roof, uh, wood shingled? I know mine, which was built, you know, sometime 1870, 1880, my house was originally wood shingled. I don't know what the lifespan was of, of wooden shingles back in those days. Uh, I, I know that uh, wooden shingles did last a long, long time. And these very well could be the original shingles. They may not be. Uh, those slabs that are up there, you can see where the shingles were nailed onto it. You don't really see any evidence of where the, it was re-roofed a number of times. Uh, you can tell that the tin was put on over the original shingles, or over those wooden, wooden shingles. Wooden shingles were a specialty uh, in themselves. There were people who specialized in making wooden shingles. There was, there was men who were trained to, to sit at a, a, a little shaving horse and split shingles all day, day in and day out, and then they would bundle them and, and sell them. And if you were specialized in making those, then you could, you could make a little, pretty good living back in the old days. But uh, these most likely are made of pine. If you buy wooden shingles today, they're made of West Coast cedar or something of that nature. But these back in those days were made out of either pine or if they had access to uh, chestnut, which they did in the early, early days around here, but after the chestnut trees were all depleted, that was the end of that. They had access to pine, plenty, plentiful, uh, plentiful pine trees. But if I had to guess, I would say that that wooden shingle roof is probably the original to this porch. This mortaring on here is modern, modern mortaring after the logs were exposed. Well, these logs never had any chinking between them. And, uh, I believe they were covered pretty quickly with weatherboarding after this cabin was built. And I believe that this was just the framework and they, they had every intention of, of covering it with weatherboarding when it was built. Uh, most settlers, built a cabin and then built something nicer later on as they prospered. It's unusual that Mr. Watley chose to add on to this and he kept this original cabin and he just added on and he lived here for the rest of his life. And he did come quite, become quite pro prosperous. He, uh, he, he became, a, uh, he was justice of the peace I believe for a long time and he was known as Judge Watley. And uh, he was a surveyor by trade. He helped survey, I believe I read, he surveyed the town of Zebulon, Georgia when it was laid out. And he was the son of a, his, his father had actually been a Revolutionary War soldier. 
Ooh. So there's the history of that family is very well documented, and there are a lot of descendants. Uh, I really wish that some of the descendants would come forward and take an interest in purchasing this place and saving it and restoring it, maybe. Absolutely. That would be great. So this would be the original cabin. This this was the original cabin with a fireplace at that end. The cabin went over to here. See where, see where the height of the floor changes? This was where the end of the cabin was, right here. And they took out this end. Now upstairs, when we went up there, I noticed that they took out these logs down here, but those logs up there are still in place, tying in that wall and that wall together. But they moved this wall over to here. Now, I'm assuming that when they did that, that uh, maybe that's when they built these stairs. I don't know. Stairs could have been here before then, because uh, certainly it was an upstairs in this place. I was just looking at where somebody removed a piece of the, the panel right there. It would be interesting to see what the rafters and all look like in here without this ceiling. Now, I know the ceiling is old and been up there a long, long time. It may have even been put up before they actually lived in this thing. But wouldn't it be interesting to see what the rafters look like? You know, if you could tell, you could probably tell from how smoked up they are uh, from the fires that they had in here. That would give you an idea of how long this cabin stood before it was sealed inside. Yeah, makes sense. And that wall, again, when it was moved in, mm -hmm. um, we saw where it was, what is that called, mortise and tenon? Uh -huh. And um, which I guess helps also to tie these two sections of logs together. And yeah. Now at some point, a previous uh, owner, once that room over there was added, uh, you could see where there was two sets of stairs. There was or two sets of steps going up to the landing. This being the landing right here, the steps that go up from this side, there were steps that came up from the other side as well. And that door doesn't go anywhere now. That's been sealed off and there's a closet in there now where that land, where, where those steps were. My granddaddy had steps like that, made out of railroad irons. Yeah, I see that. Those will last a long time. I don't know who made those, I don't know if they were here when Aaron came here or if he had them made, but those are some heavy duty and irons. We used to call those fire dogs, but they're made of railroad iron. Do you see that? Yeah. There's a two pieces of railroad track. That's pretty cool. It is very cool. I was in this house the other night sitting beside a fire in here yeah. and just thinking what an amazing experience it was to sit beside a fire in a field stone chimney in the oldest or second oldest house in Harris County, Georgia. I mean, so many of the times that you and I go and look at old home sites, we see the remains of a toppled field stone chimney or something like that. That's correct. We do. We see the remnants of something like this. And of course, uh, you think about how many settlers there were in this county and the counties surrounding us. Everyone had something similar to this. Some were nicer than others. This one was very nice. And this one was fixed up later to be nice and, and it was maintained. But that to, to get to see a chimney in this area still in operation is very, very rare. To, to get to see a chimney and fireplace like this is very rare. No hand rail needed, it can only fall forward or backward. Can you imagine being an early settler here and being in the top of your cabin looking out over, it was the wilderness pretty much at that point? It was. They probably looked out over 
freshly cut forest from this window. Uh, there's a few fields still left, like the, the pasture across the road. Uh, those have been clear just after the settlers came here. That's all pine trees up there. I can remember when that was all pasture. That's probably about a 30 year growth of pine trees. And over behind the house, what's now woods. The, I understand the house originally had about 300 acres with it. And you can see on that horizon right over there, all of that has been clear cut recently, so that is owned by the timber company. This house has currently five acres with it, I believe. And you can see back over there that uh, that's been clear cut. But this originally, when it was the Watley Farm, it went all the way to the Mulberry Creek. Mulberry and the Dowell's Mill Creek run together back here. And this went all the way to that. And Mr. Watley owned land across the road as well. And he was joined on that side by the Dowdle family, and he was joined on that side by the Farley family. And on the uh, southwest side, he was joined by the Horton family. So he had good neighbors. So Dan, what is your overall take on this house as an early settlement home, specifically in this part of Georgia? Well, it, it, it's a Harris County landmark, first of all. Uh, it has a very unique appearance. I think that it has a early uh, colonial look uh, with, the, with the story and a half uh, height. It's, uh, it just has a unique appearance. And it just has a very, very early, early Old South look. And the, with the square columns, the, the long, wide, deep porch and the, uh, you know, the salt box silhouette, as they call it, on the end of the house. It just has an old south appearance. And it's, it's one of very few left in this area like it. Most of the ones that are, that are about this age have been renovated or, or, you know, even actually sometimes moved from one original location to another and turned into a cabin or something. But uh, this one is all original. It's on the same spot it was put almost 200 years ago. And it's just, it's just unique. Dan, you've got some history at this well. You used to or have drank out of it in the past, I right? I have drank out of this well many, many times growing up. Uh, back over behind here, there was an old place called the, the Horton Place that was later owned by the, the Short family. And the Short family... Uh, sold out the property, I think, to timber company, and and uh, the caretaker for the property, and the man who had the key to the gate to get back in there was Mr. Douglas Martin, and my daddy was friends with Mr. Martin, and he would go and get the key and open the gate, and we would go back in there and play in the creek and and hunt arrowheads. Uh, my older brother's uh, hobby with my daddy was hunting. Uh, Indian airheads and uh, when the Putwood company would go in and clear cut everything they back in those days they would just bulldoze all the stumps and everything and push it all up in the piles and, and set it on fire and they did a lot of disturbance of the earth so you could go down there after a rain and find all kind of things well we had been down there one day and it was really really hot weather and we were thirsty and daddy knew the lady who rented this house and it was an old lady who lived here, and I remember uh, we stopped to get a drink of water out of the well. And she came out of the house and brought me a fruit jar to drink out of. And it was just a old, uh, I think it was maybe an old mayonnaise jar, but anyway, she brought me the jar, and I drank out of it. And I asked her if I could have the jar, and she said, certainly, baby, take the jar with you. And I said, well, do you have a lid? And she said, a what? And I said, do you have a lid for this jar? She said, I don't understand you. What? I said, a lid for this jar. She said, I can't understand you, baby. I don't know what you're saying. I said, 
do you have a top for this jar that I can screw on here to keep this water from sloshing out? And my daddy grabbed me like this. He's like, like, don't you ever speak to anyone like that again, ever. Never speak to a grown up like in that tone of voice. And I never did. I learned a lesson that day. You don't speak to grown ups that way. <laughs> but anyway, I left without a lid to the jar, but uh, we did take the jar with us. <laughs> <laughs> And so this well is kind of a landmark in itself and was back in the days that there would be travel on this road um, all the way up until relatively modern times. That's true. The old roadbed is right here. Uh, it's not where it is now. It's, it's actually over this way. I think it came right up through here and went across in front of where your Jeep is straight up through there because there's an old rock wall out there that, that goes along the road. And there were rock steps that went from the road up into the uh, upper terrace of the front of the, the, the Watley house here. So all that's visible, a little bit better in the wintertime than it is in the summer. But you can, you can see that old uh, tree line down through there that the road kind of went around this way. Wow. So the well was right by the road and of course uh, people, travelers would stop and drink water there. And the well is still good. Yeah. Want a drink? Sure. <laughs> Do you have a lid? <laughs> no lid or jar. <laughs> now another thing is definitely not often is actually being able to drink out of a 200 year old well. So. That's it. That's actually really good water. Just, it tastes like a bucket a little bit. 